I am Nick Roloff. This is the Heat Report by Chat Sports. Welcome in, and we have a fun show on tap here today, and we're going to talk about three different ways the Miami Heat can win the 2024-25 NBA Championship. It's been 11 years since they've been able to get the job done, and we've often talked about if this team can actually get a championship win with this roster currently constructed by Pat Riley. It would take a lot, and I've got three different ways that that could potentially happen on today's show. But first, let's get the good vibes in the air. Can't hurt, right? Like the video if you want the Heat to win the NBA title. And in the spirit of being in South Florida and Miami, let's get 305 likes on today's show. Exactly. I tell you what, if we're able to somehow get exactly 305 likes by the time a full 24 hours after this video goes out, if we somehow come together as a team and get 305 likes exactly after one exact day, I'm going to take down a beer boot on a show. I, I am. That would just be such a cool accomplishment. Let's see if we can do it. All right. The first pathway for the Heat to win a title. Number one, Jimmy Butler goes scorched earth this upcoming season. And when I mean scorched earth, I mean MVP, top five, and I mean like he looks like playoff Jimmy for the entire regular season. And call me crazy, probably you are in the comment section, but... This could be a legit possibility. Like, who's saying it can't be if he stays healthy for this upcoming year? And there is a massive incentive for Jimmy Butler to have the best year of his career, at least in the regular season, for the Miami Heat. Why, you ask? Well, let's, let's take a look at his contract, which has been a major talking point for this entire Heat offseason. He's got his last guaranteed year of his deal this season at $48.8 million. He's got a player option for 25-26, but as we know, and we've talked about heavily in depth this offseason, he wanted a two-year Supermax contract extension, which would have made this year fully guaranteed and kept him under contract for this year, pushing undrafted free agency back to that 2027 year. But now that's a player option. He still wants that two-year Supermax extension worth $113 million, and he said he'd be willing to opt out of this deal next year to ensure he gets that two-year extension. But if he's going to do that, he needs to prove that he can play the majority of the regular season games and be a dominating force in those games that he plays in the regular season and not just in the playoffs, either to the Heat or to any other team that could potentially give him that super max contract. And we know the story with Jimmy, a phenomenal playoff player, dominates on both ends. But the issue is he just doesn't take the regular season as serious at times and he just can't play every single game. And I'm not asking him to go out there and play 82. I'm just asking you to give me 70 plus, man, which he has failed to do in every single year of his Heat career. 52 games, 57 games, 64 games, 60. That doesn't obviously account for his first season in 2019-2020. He's consistent though. Like There's no denying that. Low 20 points per game, six rebounds, five plus assists, good efficiency, close to 50%. And he was a good improved three-point shooter this year. Low volume, and it's frustrating because he sometimes doesn't take open three-pointers and passes them up and then holds the ball for five seconds and ruins an entire possession, but that's neither here nor there at this time. But we need him to be healthy and engaged. And I'll be honest, like, a healthy and engaged Jimmy Butler for the entire regular season, it does move mountains. We've seen how good he is when he's locked in and trying to get wins every single night, like his life depends on it. He was, he's been phenomenal. Like, and I think when you ask yourself, what does that look like? Well, just look at what he does in the playoffs. Because if he plays with that same type of intensity for the entire regular season, well, this is what you're going to get. And I know that's unrealistic to ask for playoff intensity every single day. I don't think that is something that I should expect. But if he plays 70-plus games this season for the first time and gives you like really a good attention to detail – and is aggressive offensively to create for himself and others, not pass up open looks for 50 of those games, well, then we're talking really good business because when he's locked in, he's fantastic. Look at this numbers, folks. When the Heat made the finals in 2019-20, dominant on all ends of the court. When they made the spectacular run as the 8th seed in 22-23 season, he was otherworldly. That Buck series, I still never forget it. It was the best basketball I've ever seen get played in my entire life. Those five games against Milwaukee, I still can't get over those games. And he was terrific against Boston, terrific against New York on a bum ankle. Like, if he's able to stay healthy, he is a dominant player. But that's obviously the biggest factor here. I do not doubt that if he wanted to, 
Jimmy Butler could go out and average 25 points on 50% shooting and 38% from three. I, I, I don't doubt that. But the question is, is he going to be able to do that consistently for this team and stay healthy? The only way the Heat, with their current, current roster, can win a title, and this means no trades, nothing, the current 14 guys they have, is if Jimmy Butler becomes a top 10 player in the NBA, not for the playoffs, but for the goddamn regular season. Because he is a top 10 playoff performer, but he needs to do it in the regular season as well. He needs to get to that next level during the regular season. And that only helps bring Bam, Bam along, Tyler along, some of these other young bucks, because they'll get more open looks and the offense will be better. It really all starts with Jimmy. So, yeah, it needs to be him if the Heat want to win the championship. And now, no, I'm not doing this to be funny, although we do make a lot of 69 jokes on the channel. This is really a good line, though, because we talked about it. He's never played 70 games for the Miami Heat. Played middle 60s, majority in the high 50s, though. Can he play 70 games this year? If you think he can, predict it O for over. If you're going U for under, it's fine by me. It's probably the more likely option. The second pathway for the Heat to win the title is to have the Celtics route this past year where every single other team just gets absolutely decimated from injuries. And I want to talk and say this first. You never, ever, ever, ever wish for injuries. And I am never, ever, ever going to do that. But for this Heat current roster, and if Jimmy Butler does what he does last season, everything stays the sa same from last year to this year. The only way that he could win the title is if they get crazy injury luck. And that means you stay fully healthy for 82 games. That means one of the top guys on Boston gets hurt. One of the top guys on Philly gets hurt. One of the top guys on New York gets hurt. Like, that's what happened this year, right? Joel Embiid was banged up. Jalen Brunson was banged up. Donovan Mitchell was banged up. Jimmy Butler was banged up. Like, the Celtics had – like, they were a really good team. And analytically speaking, one of the best teams ever assembled. Analytics tell you that. But they also had the easiest path to the finals that I have ever witnessed, especially with Luka getting hurt late. Like, that's the only way Miami could make a run to the finals with this roster, in my opinion, is if every single team has one of their top three players, at least one of them, get hurt. And that would also have to require Miami staying fully healthy, which never happens. So, like, how can we expect the Heat to make a run to the championship and win it if everyone is healthy and the Heat don't stay healthy because they never are healthy. And we talked a lot about the Eastern Conference right there. That doesn't account for the West. Does this roster have enough to beat the Nuggets, beat the Thunder, beat the T-Wolves? Probably not, folks. So uh, it would take quite a lot of injury luck for Miami Heat with this current roster to win the title. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we break down ball. We got news. We got rumors. We got it all. We're live for almost every Heat basketball game as well. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button and join us here at the Heat Report. Final pathway that we're going to talk about today, that the young Heat take a massive, massive step forward. And who could the young Heat be? Well, it's really these three names. Jaime Hawkins Jr., Nikola Jovic, and the rookie Kalel Ware. We know, at least to this point, what Tyler Hero is, at least for the ballpark. It's not like he's going to magically turn into a two-way combo guard like Anthony Edwards or Devin Booker. No, that's not going to happen. But he can become more efficient and a better off-ball defender. That can happen, which is what we're hoping. But he's not going to take his game to the next level and become some all-star, all-NBA type guy. But the jury is out on those three young guys in terms of Jaime, Jovic, and Kalel. So what could you expect? And what do you think I mean when I say they need to take a massive step leap for this roster to have a chance? I'm talking Jaime Hawkins Jr. plays at an all-star caliber level. And not an all-star caliber level like Lori Market in giving you 24 and 12 a night um, for the Utah Jazz as the lead guy. No, I'm talking Derek White role player type level where he's averaging 15, 16 points per game, defending at an extremely high level and taking on challenges of defending opposing teams' best guards and wings, but also shooting 38, 39, 40% from three. Like, I think Jaime has the capability to do that this year. Am I projecting it? Probably not, because I'm going to have to see him show 
off an improved three-point shot before I do project that. But he would need to play at a Derek White level and become in that similar tier. I think Jovic has to become a legit defender because the offense is there. He's a 40% three-point shooter. He's an excellent catch-and-shoot guy, and he's a good player as well in transition and helps run the break with his size. But if he becomes an above average defender who can switch on the three, switch on the fours, alleviate some pressure inside for Bam at a bio, that's the next step in evolution for Nikola Jovic. And Kolo Ware, it's hard to tell you what he needs to work on. I mean, we've said he needs to add strength, needs to add more touch, physicality, and defensive positioning. But he would need to have a Derek Lively type season where as a rookie, you just simply can't keep him off the floor. And even then, Lively struggled down the stretch in the postseason against the Boston Celtics. So, like, even that wasn't that good, right? It's just hard to envision these type of centers having that large of an impact. Sure, they will be good in the regular season, but when teams buckle down and game plan for you, it's a little bit of a different story. So, for me, when you're talking about a potential pathway for the Heat to win the championship. You would need these three guys to play like, honestly, 100% better than what you're expecting, like completely double. I don't see that happening. Like, I, I, don't call me a hater because it's simply unrealistic. Could one of these guys do what I just asked? Absolutely. But all three of them is unlikely. And if you do want to win a championship with the current roster at hand and Jimmy Butler and these guys all play the same way as they did last year, you would need these three to get unbelievably good. All of them. Not just one. All. Take a guess, though. Will the Heat win a playoff series in 2025? Honestly, a valid question. Um, we talked about ways that they could win the title today, but could the Heat and will the Heat win a playoff series in 2025? It's going to be tough. They're going to be probably at best a four or five seed. And if they're worse than that, then they're going to have to play one of Boston, Philly, or New York in the first round, potentially. So let me know. Will they win a playoff series this year? Why for yes or end for no? You can also let me know what your thoughts are on today's video over my Twitter, at Nick underscore Roloff. I'm trying to grow my Twitter game. I tweet every day about the Heat, trying to get to 2,000 followers before the season begins, under 800 away. Help a boy out. And if you DM me from today's video saying, go Heat, I'm going to give you a follow back.